Good morning, everybody. And today you caught me talking about rocks. This is a new series that I am doing where I am going to pick a rock to talk about. And this is going to be pretty much unedited unless I say something bad. And then I'll have to just bleep it out. <clears throat> but we're not doing cuts. We're just going to get right in to talking about rocks. Today's rock that we're going to talk about, or mineral rather, is rose quartz. These are absolutely beautiful. So just a, a little bit about rose quartz to start out. Quartz in this version being really, really massive is a macro crystalline quartz, meaning it has really big crystal formation, or th in this case, really massive formation. Rose quartz gets its color from manganese and or titanium. Now, depending on which book you read, they can lead you to believe that it's only magnesium or only, te or excuse me, it's only manganese, not magnesium. Manganese that gives it its rose color or titanium that gives it its rose color. And again, that just depends on the book. You can find giant pieces like this, really massive, beautiful rose quartz inside of pegmatites. That's primarily where it forms. These huge batches of magma, they get to cool very, very slowly under the ground before being pushed to the surface and then exposed. Kind of like a batholith or a, a gr giant granite mountain that has time to form underground. It's often associated with white quartz, sometimes smoky quartz, and most always has a lot of biotite. Now what can be kind of cool about rose quartz is, for the most part, leaving it out in the sunshine, it should be fine. Although over time, it can kind of start to lose its color. Hopefully you can see how much darker that one is, and this one's just a little bit lighter. But as they, uh, as they sit outside and they lose a little bit of that color, um, if you break it, that fresh surface is going to be nice and bright. If you heat treat rose quartz, it turns absolutely white. And then if rose quartz is exposed to enough radiation, it turns black which is kind of cool. Um, like I was saying, it's almost always associated with giant like mica books or biotite books, which is really cool. Um, you can do a lot of things with rose quartz. You can slab it if you get a good enough piece. It is very fractured. You can see all those little fractures, but for the most part, you could turn it into beads. You can shape it into things, which is pretty neat. Uh, it doesn't really come in a crystal formation. Like you don't, it is a very, very, very rare to get full rose quartz crystals that are fully terminated like you would see in quartz crystals or just regular quartz crystals like smoky quartz, clear quartz, citrine. Uh, you don't really get rose quartz geodes at all, which is a bummer. That would be absolutely beautiful, but it doesn't really happen. Um, a good resource. Oh, before I talk about that, hang on. In comparing rose quartz to what people sometimes think they find that is rose quartz. These are two very, very different things. This is strawberry quartz. Strawberry quartz gets its color from hematite iron inclusions. So you can see it's very fractured, it's very white and milky. Um, you know, you can tell that it is very vitreous, meaning it shines, both of them do. A rose quartz will always be pretty solid in color. You're really gonna be hard pressed to find those really clear ones. Those are way more rare and probably come from places like Brazil. These were found in California in the United States. And so anyways, that, that, that's just kind of the, I guess, the gem aspect of it, which is very different from this one that has been highly, highly fractured and has been colored from iron. But most people think that when they find this out in the wild, they like, oh my gosh, look what I found. I found rose quartz. It's not. It's just strawberry quartz. It's still really cool. It, this is going to be a tumbling project for me because I found like a huge quartz pod. And so that's what I'm going to do. I guess, secondly, if you don't find these inside of a giant pegmatite, you can find them just by themselves in a quartz pod, which is basically the same thing as a pegmatite, but there's not really any other minerals that are associated with it. So you're not really finding all of your big like feldspars, other quartz crystals, and your, your mica or your biotite that might come along with it. 
and it's just the quartz. And that's kind of where I found this was a giant quartz pod, which was very, very special. And the only reason that I found this is because my very first geology teacher, I guess this is story time, Lynn, he, he saw that I really loved geology, that you know I, I was throwing myself into it, and he's all, you know, several people have told me that there is this quartz pod out on some like back BLM road, and you should try to find it. Well, after four attempts, I finally found it, and I grabbed my five-gallon bucket, and I filled it up to the tippy top. And I wish I still had more of this. I wish I could find the place again. I probably could have I tried hard enough or maybe did some really intensive Google Earth searching. But I will forever be grateful to Lynn because this was such a spark for me. I can, if you guys want, I can make a post of showing me sitting on the quartz pod. And I was such a nerd that I wore a bright pink tank top when I went to go find the quartz, hoping that I would find rose quartz that was the same color. Nerd, nerd, major nerd. But I did find it. I was able to bring a lot home. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to keep a lot of it just because um, a very horrible ex like took most of it from me. But I still have some pieces of which I absolutely love. If you guys are looking for different resources to learn about different rocks, a good Oh, a lot of you guys ask about this. These are a bunch of books. Oh, these are some other books. But these are what I first started using. And when I have like serious questions about uh, like chemical compositions of minerals and that kind of a thing. Uh, most of the stuff inside of these about each individual mineral, I have taken the chance to learn. There are some of these things that I have never seen, of course, before because none of them are in the United States or even out of the country where I've been before. But this book, even though I've tried to keep it in good shape, this was my very, very first mineral book. Like the very first one I got uh, before I was a geologist and I've, I've had it like forever. And so if we go to the Rose Quartz section, let's see, I think there's shows like a really pretty piece probably the only piece in here that has i think some termination which is wild give me just a second hopefully i can find it if not we shall move on but you can see the colored pictures inside okay this is this is what was kind of special about this book it shows an actual terminated quartz crystal cluster which is amazing. And I always wanted to find like my own little quartz or, or rose quartz crystal cluster. It was very different from just like regular quartz. Anyways, it has a corresponding page. And so you go to it. And what is very interesting about all of these books, because I looked this morning, is when you're looking at uh, the, the interesting things about them, specifically rose quartz, is they are going to either tell you, like I was saying earlier, that they are made of man or they're colored from manganese or titanium, which I thought was just kind of funny. Otherwise, some of these books will give you like quite a broad description of quartz in general. And then others will just give you this, you know, rose quartz was named because it was the color pink and you know, it cracks, it's turbid, which it really is. And if you don't know what that means when they're talking about that, yes, you can see it's fractured. You can see it's fractured. You know, it has a very, very uneven fracture, even though it has a very, very, very vitreous luster, which I love. But it's fractured and the turbid part is meaning you can't see through it. It's got stuff in there that's making it hard to see through. Anyways, each one of these books actually says something completely different about rose quartz which I thought was wild and uh, this one doesn't have any pictures unfortunately it just talks about the appearance of color being trace manganese and titanium that kind of a thing so the colors just from elemental inclusions and you can find them in giant giant quartz pods 
anyways, I hope that you guys have enjoyed catching me talk about rocks. This will be a new series that I have out and I hope that you enjoy it. This is going to be no edits. You're seeing exactly what you have. So I apologize for the traffic that is there on the street, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.